Hello. So I'm going to do one more example of a problem where we have a negated a premise where it's a complex negation, the negation of a complex sentence. So let's go ahead and get our derivation going. So we'll say show conclusion. You can, it doesn't have to be in caps. But I just leave it in caps because right now the sentence letters are all capitals. All the letters we're working with are in capitals, but it can be lowercase. Anyway, we have our show line. After every show line, what do we do? We make an assumption. We make an assumption. Uh, conditional assumption if we can. We make an indirect assumption if we can't. We cannot make a conditional assumption because we're not trying to show a conditional. We're trying to show the negation of a conditional. We're not trying to show that you can argue from R to P. We're trying to show actually you can't do that. So we're going to say assume ID because we can't do assume CD. Good. So we have if R then P. Let's pop in our premises. There are three of them. So we have if R then P. We have negation of P if and only if Q. We have if P then Q. And we have if Q then R. Well, we don't have what we need for MP or MT with any of lines 2, 4, and 5, so that's not going anywhere immediately. Line 3 is the negation of a biconditional, being the negation of a biconditional BC does not apply. But we know that if you have a negation and you get the unnegation, you can do ID. So if we could get, if we, if we could get P, if and only if Q, then we could apply ID. So that's one place we might want to go. Just think about, okay, let's get P if and only if Q. So how would we build P if and only if Q? Well, the rule we would use, uh, let's see. CB is the rule that builds conditionals. Excuse me, builds by conditionals. And what does CB apply to? CB applies to if P then Q and and if q then p. Yeah. That's what we need. We get those two. We need p, if p then q and if q then p to build p if and only if q with, uh, actually let's, let's have these in lowercase because it's going to stand that. Well, it doesn't matter. does not matter. All right, we need if p then q and if q then p uh, to build p if and only if q with cb. So that's what we want. We want if p then q and if q then p. Well, fortunately, we already have if p then q right here. Yeah, we're already halfway there. So now all we need is if q then p, right? What we would like to get. So what we want, what we want is if q then p, because that's gonna we can put that together with four to build the negation of three, and then we can apply id and box and cancel a derivation, and we're done. So good. How are we gonna get if q then p? Hmm. That's a good question. How in general do you get a conditional? Well, uh, with disjunctions, we have the rule addition. With uh, conjunctions, we have the rule adjunction. And with biconditionals, we have the rule CB. And those are the rules we use to build uh, those different kinds of sentences. What about conditionals? How do you get a con how do you build a conditional? Well, you don't use an inference rule. You do a subderivation, right? Because we have assume CD and CD. So what we would do is we would say show if q then p. If you want to get a conditional, do a subderivation where you show the conditional. So we'll say assume cd, and we get q. Now, can we do anything with q? Indeed, we can. We can use it with line 5. So we can say 5, 7, modus ponens, gives us r. Can we do anything with r? Yes, with line 2, we can do modus ponens. We have 2, 8 modus ponens, r and R is the antecedent of line 2, which gives us P. What can we do with P? P is the consequent of line 6. So we can box and cancel line 6 by applying CD to line 9. Gives us if Q then P. Good. Okay. Now we have if P then Q and if Q then P on lines 4 and 6. And we can put those together to build a biconditional if, uh, we, to build a biconditional P if and only if Q. And that contradicts line 3. So we can say 11, 3, I, D, and we're done. Okay. So there you go. This is a slightly more uh, complicated example where we are working with a negated premise. In this case, to get the negation, we had to do a subderivation, as opposed to just applying our inference rules like we did in the three earlier problems. And you'll need to do a problem. Uh, you'll need to use this strategy once in your homework, where, OK, what you need to get you need to get an unnegation. You need to build the unnegation. What you need to build the unnegation? Well, you have to do a subderivation of the thing that you need, of the piece you need to build the unnegation. Okay?
So uh, same basic idea. We have a negated premise. Get the unnegation for ID. To get the unnegation, uh, in this case, you apply CB to some stuff. And in this case, to get the stuff, you need to do a subderivation of that stuff. Okay. So the fundamental idea is if you have something negate, a complex negation, get the unnegation for ID. The second idea is that may require doing a subderivation or it may require using your inference rules. So you need to know, okay, what do I need to get in order to apply the rule that will build the unnegation? What do I need to get? So I want the unnegation. What do I need to build the unnegation? And how am I going to get what I need to build the unnegation? Okay, so how am I going to get the unnegation? And then it might be how am I going to get the pieces to build the unnegation? In the in the previous examples, we had what we needed to build the unnegation. In this case, we had to get that first and then build the unnegation. So there you go. That's our last example. We'll be seeing, and so good luck with your derivations. If you have any questions, please let me know.